finally was at a point that, you know what, when I walked into the bar, I didn't care if anybody accepted what I looked like. Um, I knew at that point inside that I was attractive, that I was good looking. Um, but at that point in time, I also started um, having issues with the escorting. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, some of my morals of being raised in the church and everything else started coming in. Um, I always had dreams of being in a relationship. Um, and when you're living that life, you can't really be in one. Um, that's where the conflicts really started coming into play. Um, I was getting, I was busy enough now where I couldn't just explain off to my friends what I was doing or where I was going. Um, now there was that fear, oh my God, my friends are going to find out and I'm going to be called, considered a whore. I'm going to be seen as dirty, untouchable, and almost have the complete opposite effect of what I was originally going for. And so then I started seeing myself that way. Um, so then I started pushing guys away. Um, how could you like somebody like me? Because it sounds to me like though you had kind of worked through um, some of your original uh, self self esteem body issues, um, it seems like the issue just sort of transformed. It did. It transformed from having issues of what I looked like to who I was inside. Um, it wasn't. I was now in a career or an occupation at that point in time that I couldn't look myself in the eye when I looked in the mirror. Um, I, the, I had become the person I always swore I would never be. I mean, nobody says at eight years old when they're asked what they want to be. Um, nobody, want, nobody says they want to be an escort. Nobody says they want to be a cowboy. And they did kind of replace sex with, you know, trying to find something there or some kind of self-worth and trying to build self-confidence through that. Right. So well, I yeah. do separate when I see someone um, that's paying me. Generally, I'm not interested in them at all. I could, couldn't give a care in the world about them. You know, I mean, they could get hit by a bus tomorrow and I would be like, oh wow, you know, it wouldn't phase me in the least. So generally that part of me separates that. I'm just like, okay, I'm here to do a job, I'm here for an hour, it's just a means to an end. And oftentimes I'll just put something else on my mind and, you know, and I didn't think about it. I'm separated from sex in general. When I have it even, you know, if I'm hooking up with some guy at a bar or whatever, I generally, I don't put an emotional aspect into that. Uh, where do you think that comes from? Ugh. Probably me sleeping around too much. Um, I'm not quite sure. Just me dissociating with it. Just, it is what it is. Do you feel like that's pretty much the norm, though, in the gay community? I think so. I think in general it's just, you know, get your rocks off and that's that. And, and you might meet cool people along the way, but generally it's just a trick. Memories. Don't forget.
to even to be a male escort, you you have to be in a certain uh, state of denial to um, be able to do it, to be able to perform in that aspect, and, and um, <laughs> uh, denial is a big theme in in, in my life. Uh, I was I was taught denial from a very young age. Uh, <laughs> That's how you deal with things, apparently. You know. um, but uh, it was, uh, you know, kind of helpful in, in the process. I have to say. Well, the drinking and partying was a nightly thing for me, and going to the club or even just hooking up with some guy from the bar was probably not necessarily a weekly, uh, every night thing, but. Uh, maybe five nights out of the week, to be honest. Um, I was starting to feel the intimacy from certain guys and how different guys work. Some guys just want to fuck and get off. And some guys do it because they want a sense of connection or intimacy because they're not finding it somewhere else. And I started noticing about noticing that about different guys and at that point when I started feeling that kind of intimacy with different guys, the guys that are that I was hooking up with, even if they were one night stands, I started trusting them a lot. Uh, there were a couple of guys that I knew that I could hook up with and feel that compassion and love and desire and I trusted them and uh, eventually it got me in trouble I met this guy of all places at the bathhouse so I hooked up with him and then maybe a week or two later I ran into him again at the same place and we hooked up again and we were having unsafe sex all, every, every time we hooked up and uh, the funny thing is that I, I, I was so oblivious that I was hooking up some guy at a bathhouse. Every time I saw him, he was at a bathhouse. Um, we would hook up and have unsafe sex. And, you know, I, because it was so, I felt a connection with him, I trusted him. And uh, eventually, you know, after maybe six, seven times of sleeping with each other, he told me that he was HIV positive. I don't think me being promiscuous has anything to do with me escorting. I think I've always been promiscuous. And I think that the only, that's the only connection with me wanting to be the feeling of wanting to be desired. <laughs>